<clears throat> yeah, I'm here. Hey, you know, we still got the purple throne here. This is, remember, this is for Prince. I did it on the, I did it on the seventh. Ooh, and it's still here. Let's think about this. Hey, he's born on the seventh of June, right? So basically, you should be celebrating him from the first to the what? To the fourteenth. It's like fifteenth, whatever. First to the fourteenth, whatever it is, because you know, that's that's logical. You know, from first to the fifteenth, something like that. So let's keep this on until the fourteenth or the fifteenth. I don't know what day today. I've lost count. That'd be all right. I'm gonna see what happens with that. Hey, look, oh, that reminds me. Can I tell you, uh, Prince is gonna be a. Uh, I'm gonna be my birthday. Talk about spreading, you know, celebrating a long time. On my 18th birthday, it was the best birthday ever. Here's what's happened. Here's, uh, here's what I was doing. Oh, these are grapes. They're black grapes. That's right. I'm putting black into my system. I'm actually strong. Anyway, for 18th birthday, I uh, just graduated high school. And I was actually uh, work for Negro, I was at the Negro Ensemble Company, an intermediate class. But um, at that time, they, I can't tell you well, they had approached me, who approached me? Um, Buddy Butler and Michael Schultz. Uh, we, would, they would do, we were doing, um, we were doing like Daddy Goodness. That's what it was. You know, Richard Wright's adaptation of this um, French guy, whatever, Daddy Goodness. And um, so, so now I have a high school book, and everybody signed the book. It was, uh, I lost that name. Mike, my, what a, everybody was, you know, Esther Rowe, uh, Denise Nichols, you know, uh, Rosalind Gass, uh, uh, Moses Gunn, you name it, uh, Norman Bush, Ed, all, the, all the people that were in the rest of the country at the time, plus all the, everybody, my, everybody, you know, uh, 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 Douglas Turner Ward, you know, Robert Hooks, everybody signed my graduation book. Of course, I ain't going to get into it. I'm not heartbroken. But I have that, you know. Hey, Nyla, boop, boop, get away from there. You're knocking the camera, boy. Thank you. The dog, sorry. Um, anyway, um, and, and, and because of that, anyway, I was running the lights with Daddy Goodness, right? And his, let me give him a memory. Uh, Doc was on the, um, he was the sound person. I'm the lighting person, right? So we're in the same area. And um, there's a scene in a play where Moses Gunn, and there's this breakaway outfit. This woman has a, it's a church kind of, anyway, the woman has this outfit when she's trying to shame her. And so, so, so the character, I guess it was, Moses takes in, and, and uh, of course he's daddy good, and he sort of rips this dress off, she's in a bikini, like a, you know, uh, as a pink, pink bikini, right? And, uh, but what happened is where I was standing and where I could see, I mean, it was like the joy, a very evening <laughs> performance. It was a joy just to watch Denise Nichols. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. But here's the thing. It's interesting because um, Doc, oh, you don't know Doc. Doc um, was the, one of the first producers of uh, Gil Noble's Like It Is. You know, Channel 7? That's who he was. He, 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 was, he died. He was a drug addict. I'm sorry. That's the truth. But what's interesting because then I think that every Doc was closer. Everybody was sort of, I won't say protected me, but you know, I never had to deal with drugs and stuff like that. But I didn't. It's my own brain. So it's very interesting. Everybody, I've always been protected like that. I say all that just to say, that birthday, I celebrated from, you know, I don't know, a week before <laughs> to a week after, you know, so I got this thing in my head, that's what you have this whole, this whole thing. Okay, enough of that, right? Why are we here? Oh, well, first of all, yeah, these are black cherries. You say, well, brother, usually, you do juice. Well, here's the thing. Of course I do juice. But guess what? When you take this black cherry, you know, like a black shirt, and do like this. It's juice in there, so this is pure black cherry juice. <laughs> no preservatives, no nothing. You get it? You understand what I'm saying? Okay, that's right. Okay. So anyway, here's what we want to talk about today. You know, you <laughs> you had Nancy and her boys and girls. You had Nancy Pelosi and her boys and girls. I guess they had taken that trip. They just taken. In fact, yeah, they took that trip. They took a trip to Ghana with the black, the congressional black boys. They took a trip to Ghana uh, less than a year ago. So I guess she had it in the head. She's simply to Ghana. She, uh, you know, she she know all about African culture. So what she do? <laughs> she had them all 
wearing kente cloth to a black American protest. They're dressing up in kente cloth. Now you you have to understand culturally. Yeah, I know. We um, you know, we used to have this thing. In fact, I did um, I have a picture of me. Yeah, when I was doing uh, the outside, there's a picture of me with, with my kente cloth was a kind of different kente cloth. It's, it's, I have a different kind of kente cloth than I had back then. But, you know, since they took that trip, you think kente cloth just, I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> All I know, it was incorrect. Now, at least if, if you're talking about black lives, or you talk about uh, uh, black Americans, like ADOS, for instance. Well, ADOS don't deal with no kente cloth. I mean, I can, but, you know, because I'm ADOS, but I can, whatever. My point is this. They are so misinformed. They are so out of, you know, they can't see anything. I don't understand. I do understand these politicians. They do what they do. Okay. But here's the thing. The other thing that's offensive, more offensive than that, because that's come from, you know, Nancy and the boys and girls. I understand. They like that. But why is Al Sharpton still on the scene? Yeah, I leave that question hanging. Why is, okay, the Reverend... I don't know what church you got. Al Sharpton still on the scene. This book, let me tell you something. In the early eighties, well, all through the eighties, and you know, all through the eighties, when I first came to be here, I'm a recordist. You know what I mean? I'm an archivist. I'm a recordist. So we used to, um, um, we have these forums. You know, um, uh, uh, Samori Marksman and Lombard Braff, we call them Batman and Robin, uh, would hold these forums in Harlem all the time. Of all these people, you know, Alton Maddox, Al Shop, all, all people came, you know what I mean? All, all kinds of forms. That's where I, I would tape the, uh, John Stockwell, you know, the cat that had, um, what's the name, uh, uh, Patrice Lumumba in the boot of his car. I got him on, he's telling him what the deal was, you know, like that. So anyway, so, so I'm, we used to, for years, I'm like, we, we used to tape, blah, blah, blah. so it got to be such that me and Melvin, you know, uh, we, we said we got to organize this. And so we organized it, so, you know, we had this group called Sound Gallery. Oh, shout out to Sound Gallery. I'm going to skip right now, real, real quick. But the, the upshot is this. <laughs> to tell you how, to talk about black liberation and whatever have you. Uh, Melvin, all of us Sound Gathered, we had to, we, we actually bought our own tape, did our own stuff, and then they would ask for it, and so we would give them copies. First we gave them the original, and then they would lose it like some more. <laughs> Whoa! So, we, so me and my wife would say, look, we got to do something else. So we make duplicates with the highest quality we can, and give them the duplicates so we still have them, the, the um, the masters, that means that every all, all the sound guys had their own masters, but you know somebody else, so you can you can like run off a copy if you if you trust it and know that person so they can use it. Okay. But here's, you think a box of tape, whatever, these people, they never even gave us the sound guys, you know, the money to buy the tapes. We had to put our own pockets. We were all poor. We didn't complain. It's for the revolution. It's for the cause, you know? No problem. Okay. <laughs> But one of the times we, I really don't respect Al Sharpton, I'll tell you what happened. Well, I was going to say it like that. If you don't know Al Sharpton's history about being a foreman, blah, 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 hustler, blah, blah, whatever you want to call him. You know, and he's a classic hustler. You know, the hair and the classic hustler. We were taping, we were always taping, and that it's and because I'm the way I am. Sometimes I would go, a lot of times I would go to a major speaker and just on the side ask him a few questions, you know, like that. Just to, whatever, different quality. And so there was something happened to and one time I went, and they all know, well, Al may not remember, you know, people, but they know who I am. So I went to talking about the, whatever it was, the topic was pretty contentious. Now, my question was something that wasn't answered, something like that. And he says, oh, no, brother, we can't talk about that right now. And he goes, and I'm going like, wait a second. This wasn't no whatever. Oh, man. So my problem is, why is Al Sharpton, we, we know this guy, still on the scene. And, and, and people like uh, what's that other the the, the, the other woman the, the, the woman that oh, uh, the Reed woman whatever she is why are they there they are handpicked they're their people now and, and because they're on a, 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 a big screen like that you know families and stuff like that they, the first thing have they in their grief I mean I know what it is right now I'm, you know people tell me, I, I don't my thing, I don't deal with everybody, I just deal with my sister with this, you know what I mean? I might tell somebody, but I deal with my sister, we, we like, like that. But if you're in your grief, man, somebody just passed, you know, I mean, my brother passed naturally, you know, whatever, we, well, that, uh, that whole, uh, see, whatever, that, that thing. But when you have a tragedy like that, there's pressure you have that, and then for the news, it send upon you, then you, and you, you know, well, 
That's why he's a family spokesman. But the spokesman they get is this crump guy. I don't know him about, but yeah, from what I understand, he just loses every case. So how do they? How do people like that get in, insert themselves into it? How do they get any kind of say so? We uninformed. Man, we better start listening to some, um, some other people's. <laughs> you are who you surround yourself with, and you are what comes into your consciousness and your, and your, you know, that's who you are. Man, we got a lot of, we got a lot of whatever to do because this, this just ain't working. Anyway, this is just a little me ranting, me being T from the Patterson's Techno Tanks a bit, letting you know what I surely suspect from a, oh, from the, from the Purple Throne here in, here in the backyard. 